it's too expensive. Is there a discount for this? You know, the other store is giving me this much cheaper. Oh, I can't afford this. Now, usually when people give objections like this, it's not a price objection, but a value objection. Now remember, it's not a price thing, it's a value thing. We would pay a lot for something we think is very valuable and we'll pay next to nothing for something we think has no value. So, when people say to us and object to us with a it's too expensive objection, remember, it's not price, it's value. So, before we can even attempt to handle a price or value objection, we have to first understand what is value. Now, what is value? Now, value is how much our prospects think that something should cost. It's what they think something should cost, as, uh, as opposed to how much it actually costs. So, if they think it should cost much higher than it actually costs, they'll think this is a great deal, fantastic, price is cheap. But if they think the value of it is much lower than what you're charging them for, they'll think it's expensive, no matter what you say. Now, before I handle these types of objections, I'm, I'm going to make a few assumptions. Number one, I'm assuming you are selling a great product, okay? Because if you're not selling a great product, if you're selling a defective product, or if you're selling a product that's not going to help the customer, this solution is not for you, okay? And that's my, that's my first assumption. My second assumption is that you're selling a product that actually helps the prospect. Not to help you, not to make up your sales numbers, but this product actually helps the prospect, okay? So that's my assumption. Now. Why does this objection occur? Why do people have a value or price objection? Now, let, let's, let's talk about the perception of value. Let's, let's just say, hold on. Right, I'm going to sell you this cat thing. Okay, it's, it's, it's pretty cute, you know. Okay, pretty cute stuff. Uh, it's, I, I think, an uh, aromatherapy thing. Right. I'm going to sell it to you. And you know from the back of your head, from all your experience, from what your friends say, that this is worth $50. It's worth $50. No more, no less. You know this. It's a fact. So I come up to you and I say, Would you like to have this cat cute thing that makes your house smell nice? It is only a hundred ringgit. Now, you know it's worth 50. Do you think it's expensive? I think anyone would. Now, rewind. Okay. So, say I'm going to sell you this cat thing. Okay? Very cute stuff. And you know it's absolutely worth $50. But I go up to you and I say, Would you like to have this nice cat smelling thing that looks cute? For $10. Now what would you say? You'd be like thinking, Wow, this is a great deal. Right? So, remember, if you think it's worth 50 someone selling you for 100 you'll think it's expensive. If you think it's worth 50, you're selling for 10, people think, will think it's cheap. So there's two things you can do here. There are two things. One, you could either increase the perception of value, meaning instead of it being worth just 50, it's now worth 150, or you could decrease your price. And most salespeople do only the second thing. They decrease price, whereas we can increase value. Let me take another example. Apple products. Okay, not, not, not the, you know, Apple. But the, you know, things like, um, hold on. Ah, 
the iPhone. Okay, this is not an iPhone, it's an iPod, just in case your eyes are sharp enough. All Apple products, almost all of it, are actually worth more than the competitors. But why can they sell their things for so much more expensive? Well, except the iPad, and nobody has caught up there yet. Why do they sell their computers so much more? How can they? If all we do is compete on price, we, you know, I, I think we'll all go bankrupt. Why? Because Apple products generally have much better quality. It lasts a lot longer. Everybody tells me that. They look better. They look, they look really cool. I mean, compared to some of the you know, computer products we have, man, they look like bricks. It gives you a great image. You know, guys who go to Starbucks would love this. Uh, it's easy to use. Uh, people who use Apple products know how intuitive it is. And they have great service. Okay? Walk into any computer store in Malaysia. You know, electronics in Malaysia is, is actually considered quite cheap compared to our neighboring countries. And if you were to walk into a Malaysian computer store, guess what you'd see? You'd see all the staff walking around looking like that. And if you walk up to them, they'll be like, yes. And service is really terrible. Okay, you walk anywhere. Uh, you could go to this place called Lawea, you go anywhere. But if I were to walk to an Apple store, I'd be greeted with, hello, good afternoon, how are you today? How can I help you? And I tell you, I feel so much more welcome in an Apple store than I do in a regular computer store. They have great service. So, Apple products have much higher value. And because they have much higher value, they can charge much more. So look at your own product. What do you say to a customer when they tell you it's too expensive? Do you just lower your price? You go up to your boss and say, you know what, customers say expensive, can we give them discount? Do you just always do that? Or do you do the smarter thing? Do you increase the value of your product? Do you increase the, perce the, the perceived value of your product? So next time you meet a customer, remember, Two ways can do this to handle this objection of price. To either decrease your price, give a discount, not very smart, or you could do this better thing, the more profitable thing. You can increase the perception of value. And how we do that, it will be covered in another video. So enjoy. And with these techniques, I hope you can turn this $10 into this 100 have fun.